it's the intro music and there's no guest surprise surprise it's me and willie do and we got a lot of catching up to do and the thing is i gotta come clean Uh oh yeah i gotta come clean i have to tell people the truth about what happened here even if they come for you will even oh. if they hold you responsible you gotta take a bullet <laughs> <laughs> I've been saying for months, saying, Will, we gotta get back and do the news, man. <laughs> we gotta get there in front of the camera, give people what they're looking for. And Will said, No, 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 no. <laughs> That's not taking a bullet. He said, Oh, you will take a bullet because you've been holding this show back. I thought you're gonna take a bullet for me. No, no, no. oh no, no, you're taking. You're always taking the <laughs> no. bullet. Come on, man. <laughs> Fall on my own sword. We're but listen. We're both getting. Bu- we're both getting bullets, no matter what. Mm-hmm. No matter what happens, the bullets are flying in this direction. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we're back. We're gonna do a news episode. There's a lot that's been going. On, a lot that happened. I mean, we were talking a little bit. We posted a couple clips on some hot topics, but it's a busy place around here, and sometimes. Uh, You know, sometimes there's projects and so forth going on. Also, my life, my life. Yes. My life. Like outside of YouTube, outside of camera lenses, like staring into them. Yeah. You're here for like an hour. I have have a baby or like a recent, like a new, I have like a new baby. Yes. Congrats, by the way. It's a very new baby. I mean, he's maybe like a week old. Uh Been been on this. I looked at him today. I was like, you've been on this planet. You've been on this planet for one week. Yeah. What a, what do you know? Yeah, you got a lot to learn here. <laughs> you call him out. He's just like, yeah. uh. he picks up some milk. He grunts a lot. He's really into the grunting right now. He's in the caveman phase. And then I got the other kids. They got me going left, right, and center. They got yeah. me all over southern Ontario. Mm-hmm. And so it's just a lot. I mean, I'm not complaining. I'm just trying to let people in just yeah. a little bit, a little touch of what's going on as far as the bullets flying and well, the, the demands being made and, and all that. It's about balance, right? Personal and business. Go on, Will. And uh, you got to have a healthy balance or go. else you're just going to go crazy. Go ahead, Will. You specifically. So. Have at it, Will. No, no, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> it's over. Let him know, Will. Let him know. Yeah. It's healthy. Healthy. (laughs) Very healthy. Why are you leaning? Because you got my wire. My wire's all messed up over here. I don't know what you did to this place. (laughs) It's not taut. Oh, well. No, it was too taut. Oh. Oh, okay. It was too hot to handle. So you have some space now. Some breathing room. What are we talking about today, Will? People have been waiting for this episode. We (laughs) spent the whole beginning of it. You trying to give people a life lesson over Uh there while taking bullets iPhone 10 modded with USB-C port listed on eBay with bids topping $99,000. I, I saw this. I, I heard about this. I saw this on Twitter. I think Mark has posted it. Yeah. It listed for, I think, $85,000. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's, yeah. that's absurd. But Earlier you know. this week, robotics student Ken Pillanel shared a video explaining how he modded an iPhone 10 with a functional USB port in place of the usual lightning connector. The USB-C port works for both charging the iPhone and data transfer. Well, of course, we knew that this would be a possibility. And it's a thing that people have wanted from Apple for a long time. I don't think the person who's willing to offer $100,000 hmm. is... Uh, like, they're doing it from a, for, from a collector's standpoint, not for the... I don't think it's for the convenience of USB-C. But I think many of us can agree that we we... We would have loved to see USB-C show up on the iPhone at some point, just for universal compatibility. Mm-hmm. I know some people say, but what about all the accessories that are on the other? Nah, man, it's just we live in a USB-C era, and all that stuff would have caught up and got figured out. And Apple themselves has all these other products that use USB-C chargers, like the laptops and the iPads and everything else. Mm-hmm. Anyway, this was a bit of work that went into this particular uh, modification how the, the video is called How the World's First USB-C iPhone Was Born. And a lot of detail here in the video. Yeah, the channel is Kenny Pie. Kenny Pie. P-I. With a link to the auction. 
Uh-huh. And he's going to get paid, which I don't mind that. Yeah, good for him. A uh, hundred, hundred grand. Yeah. I don't mind that. He played it. Uh, do you think he's going to make more to make more money? Oh, I guess so. It's just stuck at a hundred grand right Since now. Now he has kind of like a process in doing it. Oh, I don't think he's going to do many of these. I think this is a one off still. But is the auction over? Did it sell for 99000 and that's that? Or is it still active? Oh, it's still active. Six, Six more days. days. Yeah, he's going to get a few more bucks even. He got all the way up. It was six days remaining. I assume he did a seven day auction or maybe he did a 10 day. But either way, he's at 100 grand with six days, almost seven days to spare. Mm -hmm. Six days and 20 hours. So you still have time, ladies and gentlemen, if this is the, if this is what's missing in your collection. Is this somehow NFT related? Like collectibles, memorabilia, exclusivity, sure. supply and demand, scarcity. Everyone's collecting things right now. It's a very collector-oriented time we're living in. Well, it's great that it's physical, and you can actually use it. Right? So you're saying most collectibles you can't? Are you, was that, are you taking a guess, shot at NFTs or something? <laughs> well, yeah, I, I like NFTs, but at least for this, it's practical. Like, you pay for something that you can use. But would you even use it, or is it is it strictly a collector's item? Like, I have the own, world's only USB-C modded... Oh, yeah. Most likely someone's going to put it in a glass case. Or just keep it. Like, chances are yeah. if you have a hundred grand to spend on this, you have other phones. Mm -hmm. Just a guess. Sure. Just, say, just I'm just guessing. Uh, congrats. Maybe another phone in your pocket. You got a hundred grand for this one. Yeah. Just a guess. Today's episode, bot, bot, I don't know how to do this. Bot talks? It's, uh, there's too many butts in my face. Oh. Today's episode is sponsored by Me Undies. I wear, I'm wearing Me Undies right now. And it's quite a comfort experience that's going on. I got a drawer full. And I don't know how I can go back, actually, at this point. Mm. This is a soft texture. This is, actually, you know what? Normally, I go for the basic model. But recently, I was also trying out like a performance model. Okay. Which is, uh, I don't know how to describe it. It's, a, it's slightly like a lighter weight almost, maybe even a little bit stretchier. Oh, okay. I mean, performance. they Performance. Yeah, it was a little more of a performance, actually. Yeah, there you go. Quick dry and anti odor. I think, I think I was, I think I was wearing some breathe. Well, you like this one. Yeah, I have that. I have that. <laughs> is that like a leopard or a cheetah or something? Sure. Let me tell you something. I feel like a cheetah. I put those on and I'm fast. Yeah. Throughout the day, uh, me undies is a no brainer. Listen, upgrade your underwear, get it together, get your life together. It all starts under your pants. Me undies has a great offer for listeners of this show. For any first time purchasers, you get 15% off and free shipping. Me undies also has a promise if you're not satisfied with any product for any reason, you can return your order for a full refund within 45 days. To get 15% off your first order, free shipping, and 100% satisfaction guarantee, go to MeUndies.com slash Lulater. That's MeUndies.com slash Lulater. Thank you to MeUndies. We were also sponsored by HelloFresh. And what is this? A new promo they got. And Tony Porowski. Who is that guy? I don't know. He must be a chef, I would say. Oh, okay. I mean, I'm just guessing. This is America's most popular meal kit. This is all about simplifying your life it's all about like we recently got mo set up on hello fresh and he won't shut up about it yeah he's he's a change man he's a change man he goes oh, man it's so perfect it's just exactly the right amount of food i would never have made these recipes and i've been talking about it on this show it took him kind of long he actually used our promo code did believe. he yeah he did oh, i think because nice. you get some free meals with that and this is super simple guys it, it comes to your door Everything that you need to get the meal ready and done is ready is right there. It's rationed out, so it's the right amount. And the dishes are, I mean, like, look at this stuff. You wouldn't approach this on your own, on your own spare time. You would be you're in the grocery store and you're like, you can't buy the regular amount of these things because you don't even know what you're in for. Like, uh -huh. look at the pe look at the pecan crusted chicken. That's right. I said pecan. Oh. Look at it. With honey mustard sauce and lemony apple salad. So if you go through, Will, guy like you, you're like, okay, for the honey mustard sauce, how much of this do I need? Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden you're buying too too much of one item and it's your fridge forever. Yeah. The pecans, I would say. 
because uh, I don't eat nuts. Oh, God. Yeah. So, I'll save the vegan. We haven't touched on Will's nut Pecans. sensitivity in a while. Yeah. And we, we came full circle on that. Mm -hmm. Okay, you can have the sun-dried tomato <laughs> spaghetti. Sure, because they got that. something for everyone. Mushroom and oh, mozzarella, hoagies, okay. sweet and spicy chicken stir-fry. Uh, yeah. I think there's shrimp in that pasta on the left. This is just, I mean, look, 20 minutes is ready to go. Uh, Hello Fresh, you gotta get you gotta get started here. You're you're gonna see what we're talking about. HelloFresh offers 50 menu and market items to choose from every week, including vegetarian, calorie smart, and gourmet options, providing plenty of variety. Ingredients travel from the farm to your door within a week, so you get the convenience without skimping on the quality. Go to HelloFresh.com slash Lulater14 and use the code Lulater14 for up to 14 free meals and three free gifts. That's HelloFresh.com slash Lulater14 14 and use the code Lulater14. Thank you to HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. What is that? That looks like a Tesla. It is a Tesla? Do but you see the difference? with a steering wheel. Yeah. It's a new one, but with a steering wheel. Yeah, so uh, someone decided to oh, okay. install a regular steering wheel. Let me tell you something, Will. Can I tell you something? I thought, yeah, I thought this story would be... Uh, connected to you in a more intimate level. Can I tell you something? Because <laughs> you just got a Tesla. Do you mind if I tell you something? <laughs> sure. Can I say something? Yeah. Uh, the yoke. The plaid Model S yoke. Mm -hmm. I've been using it. And it's not gonna be for everyone. By the way, I gotta make a video on this. Uh, I got, a, I got so many thoughts on this car. It's actually the first Tesla I owned. Mm -hmm. And I have thoughts. You do. And feelings about this. You're a very opinionated person. No, it's a lot of good stuff to say. And But I'll just say about the yoke. First two days, I mean, this is the dumbest thing I've ever seen in my entire life. What the hell is going on here? Two days. 48 hours. Maybe 36. But the longer... I used it, the more my body and brain adapted. Mm. And the more I started to appreciate some of the advantages mm -hmm. of the yoke. Because it's not all... There are some things that are just better, like your visibility. Uh, I know this sounds crazy, but, but the display in front of you is typically somewhat obstructed by the existence of the, the steering wheel. Now listen, I'm not trying to... I'm not trying... To completely change your uh, change the world here, mm. <laughs> the wheel is an incredible thing. All wheels, anything round, yes, they are amazing. Because trust me, I got the other, I drive other cars and they have wheels in it, and I'm like, ah, yes, a wheel, lovely. But I'll just say that you use this for a certain amount of time. And you get used to the signal indicators and you get used to all the controls being on, on the yoke and you even get used to using the, the yoke in tight spaces. And I feel somehow I'm more compelled to use the self-driving features. Don't ask me why, but I just, uh, I'm having fun learning this unusual car. Mm -hmm. Now, I know that that's a weird thing to say because people are like, well, this is a huge investment. We talk about you having fun learning a car. I can't take this risk. I order this thing with this yoke and I hate it. Mm -hmm. And I totally feel that as well. I feel that approach as well. But I'll just say, in my experience, this has been a thing that's constantly improving in my relationship with the car up to this point, which is maybe a week. Mm -hmm. Is that true? Did I just say I have a baby for a week and I have a Tesla for a week? Yeah, it was a two-in-one deal <laughs> for that day. <laughs> Well, it was really close. Which came with which, which? Did the Tesla come with the baby or did the baby come with the Tesla? Whoa, I don't know. I think the Tesla. Came like, with? No, the baby came with the Tesla. Oh, okay. Because so the baby can fit inside the Tesla. Absolutely, baby can fit. Yeah. 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 The Tesla was delivered with a baby in it? Like exactly, a stork? Yeah. Remember a stork? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's Tesla. a modern day stork. Teslas are also storks. You should have known that. I've gotten... I've. I, <laughs> oh, boy. I know I'm conflicted over here. Like, I, it's not better in every way but it's also not worse in every way and and there's something about it there's maybe it's just novelty but there's something about it where i kind of miss not being in that car when i'm in the other car 
Mm. I'm just going to put that out there right now, but there's, I got so much more to say on it. And I always, and I was thinking, hey, if it bothers you that much, then they should, and I don't know if Tesla does or, or doesn't, but they should make it available with a steering wheel if you really want it. It's not, it's just another part. It's really not a big deal. Mm -hmm. So I think it should, it should definitely be an option. What does it say here? Uh, th this guy just replaced it himself. Yes. When I started on this project, I plan to make everything, including the Model 3 wheel work. Over the time I've had the car, I've grown accustomed to the yoke. Minus the haptic controls, which remain awful. He's talking about like the signal indicators and such. Mm. Washer, windshield washer. and I mean, there's just these touch buttons on it. I plan to set the car up as yoke plus stocks for my normal config and to toss the round wheel on for fun rarely. But then I got the controls on the round wheel working and I'm not going back to the yoke. So he's a full, it's a full wheel conversion mm -hmm. that he's done. And yeah, the buttons work as well. Yeah, it's cool. I I, I really or don't the, the wheel. I really think it should be an option from the factory, and I think in general it would be nice if Tesla had a few more options. But I kind of get where they're coming from too. They try to simplify the uh, product offering because they're so behind, right, on production, and mm -hmm. they're trying to make these things as fast as possible. And so they trimmed back the paint colors and all kinds of different options. I presume for one reason, in order to expedite the production process. Mm -hmm. You know, have, have a more streamlined parts list as opposed to having everybody pick every single thing like it happens when you order a Taycan. But the wheel looks fine too. I think I'm, I think I'm going to stick to the yoke though. Okay. I don't think I'm going to do any type of conversion over here. Even, even if it was like out the gate, like if, the, if I could have ordered it with the wheel, I, I'm starting to enjoy the yoke. That sounds crazy. Starting to appreciate I it. I just, I don't know what it is, man. It's fun. I hear you. I'm having a little bit of fun. Okay. Yeah. I'm not saying it's better. I'm just saying I'm having a little bit of fun. <laughs> All right. I believe you. Ford reveals the Mustang Mach-E GT electric crate motor. And this F-150 concept shows it off. Oh, God. I saw this. Yeah. This? I, I replied to Casey's tweet on, on Twitter. He tweeted on Twitter. I responded to it. Oh, okay. Uh, well, he was actually responding to the president or CEO of Ford Motor Company who originally posted the image or set of images. It's a it's a Ford F100, which I believe is the exact same truck that Peter McKinnon brought in this studio. In the uh, 70s, right? Was it from the 70s or 60s? I don't remember what year it was. It looks more it looks like, like the 60s. Oh, that's a 71. Okay, so late 60s, early 70s. Or, or there's a 75. Anyway, but look, point being is it's a very cool looking truck, regardless. And what Ford did here is they updated one of those F F100 bodies. They upgraded it to be electric. And it's it just took Twitter by storm. It took over the internet for about five minutes, maybe 15. Mm. And everybody just said, I got to have this. Mm -hmm. and, and and I was one of those people. I said, I got to have, I said, Ford, just bring it to the studio. Just let me do a quick shoot on it because it is so beautiful. With the color scheme. It's oh. so beautiful. Yes. Like, I don't know what oh. it is. Like, why is it? There's something about the old uh, design, but updated to be electric. There's something about, and you're right, the colors they chose, but I don't know. It's, it's. Are we missing something in today's car designs? Is that what's going on? Is that why this speaks to so many people? Because it has so much personality? Like, you just look at the shape of it, and it has some kind of inherent personality. Is it, are we missing some of this? Well, it's definitely a boxy shape, which uh, it has an era to it, the boxiness. But never mind the era. Let's just examine the shape on its own. Is it all nostalgia, or is, is it possible that these designs have some element that modern ones don't. Like, you know how, okay, let's take a modern design, for example. You take this tremendous amount of data and you're worried about uh, drag coefficient. And we've had so many cars in here that have to take so much efficiency into consideration that in many ways the design is kind of pre-configured, the shapes. Right. Because they got to compete on all these variety of specs. And so the Taycan or the Model S or the Model Y or even the Mach-E. I mean, the front end looks a little different, but the rough shape of these things kind of ends up being the same. Mm -hmm. 
and yeah. we get used to it. And it, so it doesn't really strike us as being something different. And to be fair, I'm not saying they should make a million of these Ford F100s because they're probably terrible when it comes to range and all kinds of drawbacks. With, but back when you weren't worrying about that so much, it gave a little more freedom to the artist to conceptualize the thing just however they wanted it to look. Mm -hmm. And it's nice how they kind of kept the interior not sleek, just kind of having the DNA of the exterior as well. Yeah. They Follow so, along. It's true. They modernize the interior without it being overwhelming. Mm -hmm. Like It has the... It does have a touchscreen. The Mach-E touchscreen. And the seats are obviously updated, same as the steering wheel. Yeah. But they, yeah, you're right. It's not overdone or over the top. Still has some plaid patterns. Yeah. On the side there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm into it, man. Myself and the rest of the in internet are into it. So Ford is doing something. And uh, I'd love to see the transition. I love to see what's going on. I'm curious what might happen here. But they also talked about other stuff, right? Like they've got this new faster Mustang Mach E GT. Mm -hmm. Uh, so there's a twin setup. What, what is it going to be? 480 horsepower? Is that what it is? For the Mach-E? The GT one? Yeah. Yeah, it looks like it. Uh, GT-derived electric crate motor dubbed the Illuminate. Oh, that's what they put in this F100. Oh, I see. Okay, never mind. The, 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 this F100 has 480 horsepower. I think the Mach-E GT, is it the same? They're using the crate motor. Right. Which I feel like it's kind of... Uh, they just put it into they're yeah. kind of like an engine. I hear you. Yeah, yeah, I think you're right. The automaker used a twin setup to create its F100 Illuminator concept, which makes it total. I don't know. Could we ever see something like this back on the road as a new product? Is that just out of the question because the shape is not aerodynamic enough? Hmm. I think people will appreciate driving these. But what if it has like only 200 miles of range? Because it's just so much wind resistance on that flat nose. Yeah. There's going to be collectors out there for sure. It's probably heavy too. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. If we're going to see a mass production of it, we need like better battery tech mm -hmm. and all kinds of things where it doesn't ma matter as much. Maybe one day. One day. Netflix launches first games on smartphones? Yes. You heard about this? Not at all. Oh, yeah. So they're, they're not directly in the app itself, but... Uh, you can download them, but you still need your Netflix account to play. What type of games are we talking about? Like trivia games? Or are we talking about... Oh. I uh, So there's five games that just got released. Um, I started playing Stranger Things 3, and it's kind of like an isometric beat-em-up kind of game. <laughs> Easy, gamer. <laughs> it's, uh, I don't know, it's kind of fun. So it's on, what, are you, uh, what is isometric? Is that is that like uh, scrolling left to right? <laughs> it's like uh, it's kind of like top down, like isometric kind of look. Oh, like original Grand Theft Auto. Kind of. Hold on, let me just show you some screenshots here. We're gonna do a screenshot or two. Wow, Netflix getting into gaming. I mean, it was, it was talked about. Oh, you're. It's like a three quarter angle. Three quarter, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got you. Not exactly, not fully top down. And so, what are you doing? You're you're running around and you're you're killing people, or what are you doing? Yeah, you're trying to defeat, I guess, the monsters. I never watched uh, Stranger like Things. Weapons. What would what would the weapons be? Would you have like a chainsaw, or would it be like a like a baseball bat? Like yeah, what? something like that. I mean, I no think guns. I think it's in the eighties. Um, I haven't really watched the show as well. Maybe it's the first season. But the game kind of draw me in because it's just one of those old school mm -hmm. kind of beat em up games. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like the art style of it. Yeah. It looks fun and cool. Pixel art. Um, yeah. But I just wanted to give it a shot because it's Netflix kind of branded game. So, so, so let me get this straight. So, so you're not playing it inside of the Netflix app? No. You have to download each game separately. From the app store? And it only works on Android right now. So iOS the Play is coming store. in a couple months, yeah. Okay, so you're on a Play Store and you just search up Stranger Things 3, the game. Mm -hmm. Okay, the game is there. You download it and then you log into the game with your Netflix credentials. Yes. Hmm. It is interesting. You would think that it would be in the app, like For simple sure. games, but these are full-fledged games apparently. 
This is just the beginning of a long journey. We're excited to provide a gaming experience that is differentiated from what is available today. Exclusive mobile games with no ads, no in-app payments included with your Netflix membership. It does, isn't this kind of what Apple does with Apple Arcade? Mm -hmm. You have a subscription fee. Yes. And then you get access to this variety of games that are included in that subscription. Mm -hmm. I guess you don't... I guess using Netflix's IP as well. It, it That appears to be a big move there. Yeah. So you can watch the show, enjoy the brand, play the game, buy the merch, et cetera, et cetera. It's a, it's a metaverse in and of itself. Whether you're craving a casual game, you can start from scratch or an immersive experience that lets you dig deeper into your favorite stories. We want to begin to build a library of games that offers something for everyone, wrote Mike Verdu, the company's head of game development. He was a major hire for Netflix, having worked at games giant EA, so a real game guy. Mm -hmm. And then, and then, yeah, it's interesting. You start thinking about augmented and virtual reality, and you start to think about experiences and crossovers between content and game. Portions of shows that could be you could play and then watch, mm -hmm. like hybrids, interactivity. It's, I'm telling you, it's a whole metaverse thing. Are you Mark Zuckerberg? Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah, I've been watching a couple of his interviews. Man, he's uh, <laughs> he's fired up these days. He's yeah. really into this stuff, crypto, and uh, I think he wants to live in his own metaverse. Social media. Like he's he's into uh, Twitter more than usual, and yeah. YouTube more than usual. He's and pumped up again. Very pumped up. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. Oh, have you? Uh, seen this no um coda yeah it's uh i think the company's called or the product's called power tap and it's a glass table where you can power your devices on let's go i'll really take interesting it interesting stuff so it's a wireless charging type of thing uh in a way uh but the way that they advertise it is that there's several layers on the glass and one is conductive Mm -hmm. So in that layer, you can add certain portions on the glass that you can like make electrified. There's definitely magnets involved here. Those things are slapping yes. down like magnets. Uh -huh. But it's clear. Like there's no wires that's attaching to the glass. Mm. Yes. <laughs> PTAP is a transparent lamination of conductive and non-conductive glass. The arrangement allows power or data to be transferred across individual layers within the lamination. Pre-machined apertures create taps to the positive and negative charged inner coatings that supply power delivery to embedded devices. These connected devices appear to be freely floating within an optically clear glass panel with no visible means of power connection. Oh, uh, look at it as a display in an Apple store. Uh-huh. You're going to sell this at the industrial commercial scale retail POS self-driving car. Yeah. This is cool technology. So I see what you're saying here. It's like, yeah, there's definitive points that you have to connect to on the glass, but there's no wire or visible electronics leading up to those contact points. Like look at the kitchen. You have the induction stove. Yeah, it's pretty or much. lack thereof. Right? That's it's just a glass table. And then you can put your pots and pans and start cooking. And it's just like a circular disc that you can put your pan on that's pretty much what your kitchen looks like right now <laughs> yeah. powering usb sockets induction charge pads induction hub mm -hmm. embedded digital touch displays led light bars control switches whoa uh, why is that why why is there not more glass tops in kitchens yeah is it because they scratch you would need like some type of gorilla glass. Mm -hmm. I, I think it would scratch. Something a lot harder yeah, like, as well. You might scratch. I'm a little nervous for that. Well, but here it is. Uh, I guess charging a phone as well. Invisible power. Wow. All right. Yeah, that's super cool. Yeah, I'll take it. I'll take it. Well, you can't get it right now. No, I'll take it. Uh, it's a different outlet as well. They will pro probably have to rewire the whole house. Oh, good. <laughs> so. There's that. Invisible but, uh, room divider. I'm curious to see what type of applications it would actually be useful for because I, my guess is it's expensive and it's going to take a minute. That'd be my guess. Mm -hmm. But uh, cool technology is cool. It is. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. This, uh, this story here. 
Remember a long time ago how you sent a story in about the it was it the FedEx truck trying to get into like it was a, a U-Haul parking. It was a lot? U-Haul, and then all the dirty water started coming out. Yeah, of the so this, sprinkler system. This story is uh, somewhat like it. Um, this guy decided to bring like a three. Oh my god! Three tire like car or motorcycle into like a skate park. Oh, and <laughs> it just oh immediately goes bad. Yeah, and it's it's you know it's always so interesting how you can't seem to fix it. Like in the panic of it, you want to hang on, and then the accelerator's on the handle, and so many accidents yes, yes. happen that way where you just can't. It, it, you're, you need to hang on to your grip because otherwise you're going flying. Sure, but in reality, yeah. you should just let go. Like I drive um, some of those sea dews oh, yeah. jet skis. And, the, you and have, the throttle is literally on the uh, handle. Right? It is, but you have a clip on that if you go flying off, it shuts it down immediately uh, so that you can let go. Now, obviously, in the case of that, you're in the water. If this guy lets go, he's getting beat up. But yeah. <laughs> it's just... Uh, oh, he could have been a lot worse. Uh -huh. he, he may have messed up the machine. It looked like he flipped it a little bit, but it could have been way worse. Yes. It hit someone, you know. I mean, there's skaters in the background. Could have been like, what, way what are you worse. Doing? A man tries to ride a three wheel. Oh, people are going to want to look this up. So it's called Skate Park Fail. A man tries to ride a three wheel. You can, I mean, you can look it up on Jalopnik. Is that where you found it? Or you can just look it up on YouTube. Sure. Inside of a skate park. A user at a skate park captured a man trying to ride a three-wheel motorcycle that loses control. No one was injured or hurt. These clips are so different <laughs> as long as no one is injured or hurt. Because yes. otherwise, it's, you feel really bad watching them. But yeah, but, uh, yeah it's that's a tough move. Yeah. That's a very, very tough move. What is this? Uh, a McDonald's NFT? Yeah. Have you seen this? No, the, I haven't. Uh, it's for the McRib. What's up with the McRib? Do people, is there really this much of a commitment to the McRib? Because, Have you tried it? Yeah, I'm sure oh, I did okay. a thousand years ago, but is it that big of a deal? Uh, I'm guessing this is uh, the first of one of many mm. McDonald's NFT line. And the McRib, McRib is just a really iconic right. uh, meal. I guess it's sandwich. because, I guess it's because, NFTs are all about scarcity. And mm -hmm. then the McRib is kind of like a scarce McDonald's item because it seems to come and go. Mm -hmm. The pizza would be another NFT. Chicken wing. They had chicken wings? They had chicken wings, yeah. Oh, I never knew that. Yeah, yeah there's a few items that <laughs> pop up at McDonald's for Shamrock a minute. Rock shake, you know. What was the flavor of that? Mint? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. McDonald's is creating his first ever non-fungible token in honor of the McRib's 40th anniversary. Oh, okay. So there's a reason. Mm -hmm. the fast food chain will be giving out the NFTs to fans on Twitter starting November 1st. Oh my goodness. NFTs are... Yeah, we know what NFTs are. You don't have to tell us, NBC. I present to you... Look at the way they wrote the tweet. I know. Like No caps and then... Trying like, to be cool. Yeah. Wow. Trying to be modern. I present to you the most important NFT... Retweet for a chance to win one of 10 exclusive McRib NFT hashtag. No purchase necessary. 50 US 18 plus only. Winners need a crypto wallet to receive the NFT. Man, I like the presentation though with the gold McDonald's card. Mm -hmm. That looks cool. Very collectible. 1.8 million views. It's really funny what it takes for something to be to really sell to you the idea of collectability like yes. gold and shiny seems to immediately say oh i need to collect that uh-huh it has such... like a hologram look too <laughs> like 3d <laughs> and it has to spin around uh -huh. and there has to be glowing and animation and there it's collectible perfect uh -huh. but it, isn't it weird that even okay so you have crypto you have nfts you have whatever post uh, post money, post currency mindset. It's certainly post raw material, post precious metal ideas, hmm. right? And yet you still try to mimic precious metals. <laughs> yeah. You see what I'm saying here? Yeah. Like it's got a, I, it looks like a hunk of gold in a golden room. Maybe this is just a phase where they okay. have to kind of wean 
into like some sort of digital world. And but for now, they have to go with like physical no, uh, uh, the, skeuomorphism kind of. For the record, I'm not debate. Like I'm not uh, saying it's that I yeah. don't like it. I just it's funny that it works it is, on yeah. us. Yeah, it's like it's like uh, in the Olympics, you're really good at a sport and you get a gold medal. Mm -hmm. It's like here's your gold medal, or or you would be playing a video game and there would be some version of it. Like you scored gold. Mm -hmm. I wonder what these NFTs will be worth if there's only ten of them. Man, yeah, maybe in like ten years. Not even 10 years. In a week, if, if the 10 sure. are given out. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm curious, too. They're going to fly, man. It's like supply and demand. It's just funny. Like, uh, they have these official rules. You can kind of take a look at it, but it's really long. And they tell you, like, what to do and what not to do about the NFT if hmm. you do win it. Hmm, interesting. You, know? like you can only sell the NFT, but you can't promote it in a way where, like, you can get money but not sell it. Oh, you can't use the NFT. You can't like sell tickets to look at the NFT. Yeah, yeah you can't do <laughs> You that. can't have an art gallery. But it's a whole like You can't open your own McDonald's here. Yeah. with the NFT. Yeah, I get it. Wow, that's wild. Mm -hmm. uh, have you seen Kanye without eyebrows? <laughs> yeah, I... Okay, so I saw these photos floating around uh -huh. and I saw a couple of different theories on why it might be. I don't... He's obviously experimenting with his look a lot because mm -hmm. he went from uh, wearing the masks. He had he was wearing a couple wild masks for, uh -huh. for a bit. Uh, starting with Donda. I mean, Donda, he just had his whole face covered mm -hmm. in black. And then you saw him in a couple more like human looking, however, uh, relatively bizarre looking masks after the, the sort of fancy shroud looking masks. Then all of a sudden he had... I don't know if that could, would you call that human? Like, what is that? That's like a monster almost, or what, what is that? I would say it looks like a Michael Myers mask mixed with kind like of. a gremlin or something. Yeah, or a troll. I, I don't know what the name or word for that is, but uh, but yeah, he's he's worn a couple masks out, and now he's shaved the eyebrows. He also shaved his head um, with oh, a weird pattern. Yes, behind. I saw that too. Remember that? I saw that too. So he's experimenting quite a bit with his uh, looks. Is there anything in this? Uh, one thing I'll say about eyebrows, though, is it's not just about looks. Like, the eyebrows are there. They do work. It puts a human face in no, no, <laughs> kind no. of like a no, no, I agree. In perspective. No, I think. Oh, it balances oh. out. All that aside, no, 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 all that aside, I'm saying they, they serve a function. Like, they actually, when it comes to the sun and brightness. Oh, yeah. It gives a little shade, right? A lot. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. If you, so, have you ever seen in baseball, they put the eye black underneath their eyes? Yeah. Because you get the reflection of, yes. of the brightness off your cheekbone and then back into your eye. And you're trying to stop that from taking place. Uh, your eyebrows provide a pretty significant amount of shade. Hmm. Go, you try, even it seems subtle, but you shave them off and it's it's bright. You need some sunglasses. Mm. Uh, I don't know how big of well, a... Well, he's out, out there in the sun all the time. Consideration that is. But he's squinting in that one. Doing a Sunday service. He's squinting there. It's a bit bright. Poor see, guy. What, does he have any... Uh, see, he got to be squinting the whole time. Yeah. Look at that one. It looks uh, painful. That's not very practical. Indoors, it might be okay. But I guess if he's wearing the mask a lot, then you have that part as well. Mm -hmm. uh, does it say is there any did they give us any reason for it or no no unfortunately no. not no it's just a just an experiment uh, <laughs> just see the girl just like directly looking at his she's eyebrows. like that's right Those, that's right your eyebrows are gone yeah she's like I do notice that it's like it's a confirmation quite the look uh, here's some quotes from people on Twitter who had opinions Kanye a real psycho if he had the barber shave off his eyebrows, let alone ask for that service, that is right up there with asking your barber to shave the mustache and leave the beard. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of responses here. Oh, okay. I think it's a but, little uh, more than shaving the mustache, leaving the beard, but okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, Kanye, why you cut the eyebrows? Yay, eyebrows. WTF. All right. Well, listen, you're in the entertainment business. People are looking at you. We're on the website looking at them. That's, but see the squinting? I'm telling you. And uh, you make money because you have people's attention. 
And so you do, sometimes you do some wild things to maintain it and you can get, he can get an xxlmag.com article just by simply taking a razor out. Yeah. Unfortunately, this is not a trend that I'll follow. <laughs> so he's a, he is like slated as a trendsetter, obviously. He's Kanye. But right. for him to do this, I mean, I don't know if anyone's going to follow. Well, I don't know that they have to. I mean, he's he's in a different position, right? Like you don't you also don't wear those sneakers. Mm. Right? Do you? Do I you? would like to try. Yeah, but okay, why didn't you? They're expensive, man. Yeah, Can but that's not the only the reason. Prices? If you if you really <laughs> wanted it, you would have got it. Yeah. Like there, there's it. What, so this is part of a song. He put out a song, Pure Souls, with Roddy Rich, Marilyn Manson, and the Sunday Service Choir. Yes. So and and the look is part of the music video. Uh as well, by the looks of it. Sure, yeah. If you were to click play there. Okay, so yeah. hey, listen, man. It's, it's, it's all, you do you, Kanye. Yeah, but 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 we, we were all wearing a costume of sorts. Mm -hmm. We all make these decisions, what the hell we're going to put on our bodies or what we're going to leave on or shave off. or It's all kind of weird. Mm -hmm. So, but eyebrows, like I said, the biggest, t the biggest problem for me here is that they, uh, they work. They do a little bit of a task. Yeah, there's a function there. Yeah, that's the only thing I'd say. About all right, last one. You might like this one. I do like this one. A potato the size of a small dog is found in New Zealand. I love this. Yeah. That's uh Oh, it's hard for me to tell because that truck is a toy yeah, truck. Yeah, there's no real perspective. But it but is a hell of a potato. See. No, no, no. I, I, I know how big that potato is. That's a big potato. I mean, it's got a kind of a funky shape to it. Yeah. Was that your phone? Yeah, it's my phone. Well, your phone, not my phone. Mm -hmm. uh, I like big, uh, like big produce. Sometimes it would be like the biggest uh, pumpkin. Have you ever seen those before? Yes. Uh, but this uh, potato is uh, obviously unusual, not just from a scale perspective, but also a shape. Yes. You never really see potatoes outgrow itself because they're usually just like a weird uh, oval shape. Mm -hmm. But you don't see it look like this. Are you a big right? potato guy? I love potatoes. Yeah. What's uh, what do you do with them? Well, fries are my number one. Oh, Baked well, potatoes yeah. are great. Okay. You know. Yeah, mashed potatoes with okay. garlic. Oh yeah, yeah. Um how often are you semi smashed or mashed? Well, they're different. So you get some chunks and okay. leave the skin on. That's great. You just pointed. <laughs> pointed down. Do you put pepper as well or Of course, yeah. Okay. A little bit of butter. Um Heavy cream, sure. My sister does that, but uh, I like to use milk. Wow. A little bit of heavy. A large potato sits on a toy truck at Donna and Colin Craig Brown's home on Monday near Hamilton, New Zealand. The New Zealand couple dug up a potato the size of a small dog in their backyard and have applied for recognition from the Guinness World Records. Yeah, I just wanted to point out too, like they took a piece out of the giant potato because they didn't know what it was. Oh, at first. right. They thought it was just some sort of fungal growth. You know what it kind of looks like? If it was smaller, it kind of looks like a truffle. Yes. Yeah. Hmm. I mean, this would be a huge truffle. Truffles are wild. How they use the pigs and the dogs to go get it. Mm-hmm. They just sniff it out. Do you like truffle? I'm not like, it doesn't drive me crazy. Like, I have to have it. Yeah. It's, 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 uh, it's fine. Okay. Does it drive you crazy? You know what? <laughs> I don't remember how truffle tastes like. Yeah, neither do I. Maybe we suck. Maybe we <laughs> need maybe we need to expand our uh Sure. Maybe I just didn't have the right cuz I I'm I'm with you. I I'm I've certainly had like a truffle sauce of some kind and we're like, "All right, okay." And, I will say uh, I just want to make a quick coffee uh update. Okay. Because the company, go to their website, they send us a bunch of stuff. Cometeer. Uh, yeah. Is that how you say it? Cometeer. Good Lord. These these dudes are for real. This is not, uh, they're not a sponsor yet. They should sponsor us. Well, I contacted them. Okay, yesterday. good. Sp uh, you better, like, just send us this stuff. They are, though. They're going to send more. Yeah, and this is genius, this stuff. I'm not going to go into the whole thing well, right now. Well, tell... What did what is it? 
tell to the audience. Look at this website is well put together yeah. as well. They they so the idea of having a coffee in a capsule like a Keurig style coffee, except in this case it's frozen and it's concentrated. And so it's not like this uh, these grinds that have sit, sitting around stale. It's it's ground up at its peak potential and then frozen out. The flavor is sealed in. And I was skeptical. And a box just showed up. I think it was unprompted. They just thought we might like it. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, I'm pouring the hot water in, and I'm drinking it, and I'm blown away. And I'm 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 the guy that's doing the whole pour over thing in the Chemex. So like it's tough to convince me. Because I'm not drinking the Keurig stuff. I don't even want the. I don't even want to buy coffee that's been ground already. Mm. In most cases, I just really appreciate the coffee. Will okay, yeah. And then these guys did a capsule, so I was skeptical if they could encapsulate the real coffee thing, and they did. Mm -hmm. They did. You enjoyed it. They uh, did. Yeah. So shout out. I, I, I don't Comment know. I don't, the, the truffle thing made me get to this point because coffee is one of those things I can really appreciate. The, yeah. differ, the difference between like a proper one and, and and everybody has their own flavors and differences. You know, some people pick up some red wine. Like, I don't know about you. You pick up a red wine and you're just like, okay, that's red wine. Or you pick up a red wine. It's a certain uh, flavor profile and you're like, oh, that's different. Yeah. Does that happen to you? Um, yeah. I'm not a good yeah, taste not. guy. I'm not like you're a not sommelier. A, you're not a good one. <laughs> 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 but uh, I I enjoy it for what it is. This coffee is really good. Okay, so what is a flavor or a category of foods where you are very particular? And you would say that you are more of a connoisseur where you would want things to be a certain way. What would that category of foods be? Hmm. I would say... Like, like if somebody, it could be really wrongly done or it could be just poor, uh, like a poor set of ingredients and you wouldn't, you'd be like, this is not the right way. Like, where are you particular when it comes to food or drink? Man, I don't know. Oh, you're just easy going I, guy. I, yeah. I'm pretty open to. You're an easy going guy. Eating crappy, crappy food. Really? I don't, yeah. I don't know. Okay. Like, right. I'm hey, not, man. Hey, man. Uh, I don't really have too much taste. Hey, man. <laughs> or high standards for coffee or no wine i'm not or, saying coffee or wine yeah. i'm saying any food category i know i can't think of for any example right for example if it comes to something like pasta i can't have it overcooked it has to be al dente it has to be uh, okay yeah. has a little snap to it when you bite it if it's mushy pasta i'm just i'm done i can't i'm out mm -hmm. you throw it against the wall no i don't throw it against the wall but i'm just saying like there's certain things where I feel like you taste it a certain way and, and, and it's easy to make it a certain way. Like, for example, with pasta, it just means taking it off sooner. Sure, like It's yeah. really not a big deal. It's not to do necessarily with the noodle or anything like that. It's just the timing. Yeah. And it's a lot of foods like that. Like, I'm sure, okay, what about a steak? Do you want it to be cooked a certain way or do you not oh, care? Oh, of course. But okay, I'm not picky right. about it. Well, you Medium rare is what people like. I would say uh, probably a, a Jamaican patty. That would get me going. What um, what what is a bad particular. what is a bad one? Like I, I mean uh, I, I know a good just, I know a good yeah, one. You know. I know no, I know a good one, but a bad one would just be from the freezer section at the supermarket. Right. Is it just very basic and kind of lacking in uh, freshness? Yeah. And then they come out really flat because he just stuck it in a microwave or uh -huh. whatever. But yeah, I guess a fresh one uh from a restaurant that makes it, you know. In house, yeah, Tweety. Fresh ingredients. Shout out Tweety's. Sure. No, are you off Tweety's now? I wouldn't say it's the best. No, but, so have but, you had Randy's? But I appreciate the the love that goes in. Okay, okay. Because they make it fresh. Then, yeah. then shout out, shout out a place. Uh, I don't remember. It's been a while. This is but I'll, I'll, this is a terrible <laughs> this is a terrible segment. It's a bunch of. Uh, uh, non finished recommendations here. Yeah. Maybe I'll tweet it out or something when well, I find it. Well, there's one on. But people uh, can't get it because it's in Toronto. Yeah. There's some people in Toronto who are listening to this. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You one can, person. Yeah. If you're in this area, okay. 
if you're up north of the city, you can check our guys over at Tweety's. And if you're uh, if you're in the city, then you can check uh, Randy's. Randy's. Uh, which is the triangular shaped ones, and that's over on Eglinton West. Oh, okay. Which I used to go back in a day when I was around there more often. But there's actually a few spots in that in that area. It's right there. It's already there. Fifteen sixty nine. Four point six stars. I mean. Anyway, listen, man. In Toronto, we're kind of spoiled on this front because we have such a variety of uh, different foods and cultures and things like that. So mm -hmm. we can we can uh, develop these extensive tastes for all this all these different things. Yes. However, we don't have a potato that scale. That's saved for New, New Zealand for the time being. 7.8 kilograms. Yeah. Which they believe is the record. The previous one was only 5 kilos. Look at that monster. You keep that forever? Yeah, it was what like a little baby what do, you, what do you do? Like, how do you preserve that? Or so, <laughs> right now, it's actually molding. Uh, so, they have to... They actually have to put it in the freezer. Yeah, seal it up. Freeze yeah. it up. Or just make some hash browns and call it a day. There you go. We're back. Are we're we back. back? Are we back? Yeah. Are we back. actually back? Yeah, we're back. All right. You better bring some food recommendations next episode. Right. Will. <laughs>